The Cuban-born band leader Machito and his brother-in-law, Lorio Bauza, introduced jazz arrangements into Latin music, setting a torrid pace, which other musicians were quick to notice, among them Dizzy Gillespie. I've been interested in Cuban music since like uh, 1938, because uh, uh, they had some bands used to come in the, uh, come in the Savoy Ballroom, and, and, I, and they let me sit in and I play. Yeah. So I, 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 I've been with it. And uh, when I was getting ready to, to organize my big band, I, I consulted Mario. I said, Mario, man, I want one of those guys that play them Tom Tom things, you know? <laughs> I didn't even know the name of this thing. And Mario said, I got the guy just for you. But he doesn't speak English. I said, mm, so? So Mario came by my house. I was living at 24th, 7th Avenue, and took me down in the Spanish Harlem to Chano's house. And Chano was there with his lady, and then we sat down and, and talked. And so he said, yeah, I want to join, join the band, in, in Spanish, whatever that was. So Chano came with me, and Chano was, it was funny, man. And he understood a lot of English, but he couldn't speak it. So somebody asked him one time, say, hey, Chano, I, how do you communicate with, uh, with Dizzy? You, you, need to, you don't speak Spanish? You don't speak? He said, uh, Dizzy, uh, Dixie, Dixie, Dixie no piggy pani, uh, no speak English, but Bo, uh, we speak Africa. <laughs> you know, so, so that, that's how we, we came together. And all of us, Channel had that whole band speaking broken English. <laughs> John Oposa was born in 1915 in former slave quarters in a poor district in Havana. By the time he was a teenager, he was a famous Romero and street fighter. He spent his days hanging out in the courtyard, drumming, chanting, composing songs, chasing women, and getting in frequent brawls with his rivals. Chano's songs earned him local fame in the 30s when they won top cash prizes in Carnival. Casino review dancers sought him out to do choreography for their shows. Chano became a celebrity. When Chano heard that his compositions were popular in New York, he moved there. At the joining Dizzy Gillespie's band, he became a favorite with audiences. He would strip to the waist and oil his body to perform long drum solos. And boy, he killed it. And he was on the stage. He was on the stage with this drum around him like this. And he was into it. He was singing and playing and dancing at the same time. This guy could sing, and sing one thing, dance another thing, and play another thing at the same time. I don't know how he did it. I don't, I don't know how he did it. <laughs> but anyway, he was doing this, he was into it, and he was, he was looking like he was, you know, like he was looking for the gods or something. I want to say. It took a while for Chano to fit into the jazz band. After he had recorded several albums and played before awestruck audiences, he felt right at home and started bringing Dizzy his compositions. After Channel came to me out in, we were out in California, and he said, I got the ID, man. I said, yeah? He said, yeah, yeah. He said, Bow, bass, he said, he played. Now this is the first time in jazz that the bass player wasn't playing boom, 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 boom. It's the first time, because I hadn't heard the, the, none of the bass, the, all the bass players were talking about boom, 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 boom. So Channel said, the bass player, I said, bass player, first, power. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. And he said, saxo, saxophone. Boom, ping, boom, ping, boom, ping, me, boom, ping, boom, ping. <laughs> Write it out uh, as, he, as he talked. I don't know what's going on. Trombone. Boom, 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 
dun 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 when, when, when it was when I looked at the, these, these different parts on on the thing that I'd written, I said, "Wait a minute! Now we need something else. We need harmony." But it, was, it wasn't complete. It wasn't complete harmonically. It was just lots of rhythm, and it was going. So I say, I say to myself, myself, you 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 must do something to 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 make hum, harmony in this. So and then I wrote this bridge. <laughs> and then we took this this thing that we'd written that 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 I'd written to Gil Fuller. The Gil Fuller was the was the was the arranger, and we gave it to him, and he blew it up, and he blew it up magnificently, and so that that's how my taker came about. It was similar to a nuclear weapon when it burst on the scene. They'd never seen a, a marriage of Cuban music and uh, American music like that before. In 1948, Dizzy's big band made numerous recordings and toured Europe and the States. But Chano didn't like touring the segregated South. Traveling in the South at that time was very, very difficult for us because we, we couldn't stand in the white hotels. Uh, we had to stand in these little the raggedy hotels down in the, in, in the colored neighborhood. So, and we couldn't stop. We stopped and we couldn't go to the bathroom and everything. During one concert tour of the South, Chano's drums were stolen. He returned to New York to buy new drums, and he decided not to rejoin the band until it returned. While waiting, Chano hung out, got high, played drums, and chased women as usual. When he thought a dope dealer named Cabito had cheated him, he tracked Cabito down and beat him up. The next day, in the El Rio bar in Harlem, Chano put a coin in the jukebox, punched up Anteca, and began to dance. Cabito came into the bar and, without saying a word, gunned Chano down. As Chano lay mortally wounded, his life slipping away on the barroom floor, Manteca finished playing on the jukebox. 